Right, I'm going to begin with you, Kerry. I was just wondering why this particular novel, what was it about this narrative that appealed to you as a filmmaker? I, I'd been working on um, the subject of child soldiers for a while, and especially uh, the war in Sierra Leone. But um, as a history major, a lot of times I come at things from much more uh, academic perspective and do all my research in a way that it's, it's kind of more global. And then from there, I usually find the, the personal narrative. But Uzo's book starts off with such a, a pure and innocent voice from the inside out and isn't worried about political context or like sort of historical context that to me it felt so much more impactful as a story. And then I was able to sort of apply everything that I'd learned about these wars uh, in terms of the physical details to his story to, to bring the whole thing to life. And Abraham, how did you uh, come to be involved in this project? And did you need any convincing or were you very keen from, from the start? Uh... It was, I was in school on Friday and we were playing football and my white man was in our school watching us playing football. So he told us to come for this thing, so we thought it was a football team because we were playing football and he was watching us. And after the audition, I was told with some of my friends before they told us that it was a movie, so they told us to come for audition one of the television stations in Ghana. And I was working hard to get a role, I go, that's why. I got it and I played the role. Did you ever think you were going to be an actor in this life? No, a musician. <laughs> that was my next question, actually. Cheers, Bill. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, congratulations on winning that award at Venice as well. Do, do you want to be an actor from now on? Is, is that a career you'd like yeah. to have? Yeah, because now I see that I can like act, so I want to be an actor. And how was it uh, working with Idris Elbow? Had, had you heard of him before uh, this project? Yeah, I've watched some of his movies, like, Thor, but I don't know his name that he was called, Idris Elba. So for me to work with him, I was shy of him and afraid, like, he's like a giant. And I was like a small boy, but I guess sometimes he played football with us on set, so it became normal for me to work with him. I mean, Kevin, you must have been pretty thrilled to find Abraham, because, I mean, when you're with a film of this nature, when you're relying on, on a, such a young actor to, to carry the movie, I mean, that must have been quite a daunting prospect when just before you started the, the casting process. Uh, yeah, there was nothing uh, not stressful about the idea of trying to find um, our principal uh, actor within a couple months, actually within a few weeks of shooting. Um, you know, and there, that that fact wasn't lost on anyone involved in production that if we didn't find the kid, we didn't have a movie. But we also only had Idris Elba for a short period of time, and we had that window. So if we didn't find that kid by that time, we we're gonna have to cast somebody. Uh, but we were lucky enough to to find Abraham on that soccer, that football pitch, and uh, um, and and to to have him perform like he did for us was a uh, pretty. Um, Pretty much a miracle if you think about how quickly it happened. It sounds like one of the more sort of challenging shoots. I read, obviously, you caught malaria. Idris Elba almost fell off a cliff. I read that there were sort of extras in prison, and there was all sorts of things going on. Was there ever a point where you thought there's a chance we might not be able to to conclude this? Every single day, yeah. literally every day. That's not even an exaggeration. Every day I was like, this is a sinking ship. Someone should be making a documentary right now so that at least they have something to sell. Yeah. And of course, the distribution rights were sold to, to Netflix uh, in, in this instance, which is obviously quite groundbreaking. Um, can you see that becoming more of a, a trend in, in cinema? Can you see that happening quite often from here on? I think it could be, as long as like Netflix uh, commits to uh, exhibiting the film or distributing the film in that way, so that it's not just reserved for the streaming service. If, if, if Netflix commits to that kind of game and sees the benefit, which I think they will at this film, of, of showing their content on a large screen for collective audiences to experience it together, uh, that could be an incredible new model. Because I think already the, the whole studio slash distribution system needs to be shaken up anyway. It, it can't continue as it is where like pretty much it's reserved now for tentpole films. You know, the art house films are, are, are disappearing. It's becoming, you know, like the, the, the black rhinoceros or something. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you 